we're exactly halfway through 2024. So let's check out the biggest songs of the year. Every song to hit number one so far. Let's go one by one through them and uh, talk about them, rank them. Also, I don't count Christmas songs, guys. I, I didn't count Christmas songs because that's stupid. The first number one song of January was a song that I almost completely forgot about because it felt so short-lived, but it's uh, Love It On Me. <laughs> Dude, I forgot about this. Did anyone else forget about this? Love It On Me, Jack Harlow. I don't know. As far as a Jack Harlow song goes, goes like this is fine you know what i mean i don't think this is awful at the same time like when we were just listening to it now that song was two minutes long and i didn't i didn't want to finish it <laughs> so honestly like i'm probably gonna put it in bad for now like we might if we get worse songs i guess i'll move it up for jack harlow's standards i guess this is an okay song but overall as like a number one song as like a hit song like do i think this should have went number one if i had if i were able to choose absolutely not uh i'm gonna put it in bad i feel like that's fair What's next? We're still in January. This was Ariana Grande's big return, big lead single. Yes, and, and it was a house song. After listening to the album, I'm like, this is a dumb single. Like, I don't get, I don't get why this is a single. Like, it's a fine, like, like it's a good, like, 90s inspired house song. Like, I think it's catchy. Also, like, looking back on it in context narratively for everything that was going on in Ariana's life, I think coming back with the response, yes, and, which is kind of like, this was supposed to be your kind of like, fuck you, I guess. I don't know. I think that that in itself, not that that's really good affect the placement but i think that in itself was kind of weird no uh like the whole thing feels strange i think narratively about this album i think there's some bangers on it but like looking back on it right i think i'm gonna put it in okay not because i don't like the song like i do like the song and i think it's fun but like is it like is it a highlight off of the record for me no not really like i think it's fine i think for what the genre is and the fact that she's kind of riding off the trend of a lot of artists doing the house thing like it just isn't a highlight of like big mainstream artists like going back to like doing like house music like I, I just don't think that I just don't think she nailed it as well as like um people like Beyonce did you know what I mean and it's frustrating for me after listening to the album that songs like by we're not pushed i think that aspect of it is a little frustrating for me what's next we're in february now and honestly i love this song when it dropped in february i haven't gone back to it much since february i listened to it a lot in february but i haven't gone back to it much but yeah I just it's his megan the stallion which is a bank a oh My yeah so why did i stop listening to this go, instantly no, i'm in Hiss by Megan The Stallion. It's great. It's great. Coming back into it with fresh ears, it, it's as hard hitting as I remember it being. Like the lines are still so clever. It's great. It's great. It's great. The beat's fantastic. It's such a tasteful diss track. It really isn't a diss track. It's got some disses in it, but I think a great diss track is a song that can also like you can just listen to it and like not be attached to really any beef or like you don't need context. And that song does this. You know what doesn't do this is Nikki's response to this song, Bigfoot, uh, which I think is like a, one of the worst songs of the year. Like, I just think that song is so awful. Yeah, his is fucking great. I agree with you guys on that one. We're in March now, and when this song dropped, I was like, wow, she's actually doing it. Oh my God, we're getting a Beyonce country album. That's what I was thinking in March. And then it didn't really end up happening like that, but I mean, we kind of did. Texas Hold'em Beyonce. This is, uh, this was, I guess, like the most straightforward, chart baiting country music of the entire Beyonce album once it came out and definitely like this song was released with 16 carriages and out of like those two singles this is obviously the one that was going to be a big hit 16 carriages is a little bit more like artsy country music and this made sense like uh it really has like a line dancing feel to it this is straightforward country music and it's cute I think it's one of the worst songs off of the album but I think overall that album is really good so uh, that isn't like too much of an insult it's definitely not exactly my style style of country but for what it's attempting to do i feel like it does a pretty good job of it it's clearly attempting to be like a, a chart topping country hit and i think she did a good job of that obviously all right guys we're gonna make this one short because i just do not want to listen to the song yeah uh we're still in march kanye dropped an album tiktok riz party carnival kanye west ty dollar sign rich the kid of playboy Cardi. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, listen, uh, my perspective on this song, like, did I ever really listen that much to this track? Like, no, but I could not get away from it at a certain point. The amount of TikTok edits to this song is just ridiculous. And then there was the whole TikTok Riz Party thing. <laughs> like, I just think the meme potential of this song uh, went absolutely crazy. It just, it, it just ended up sounding like so uh so fucking stupid to me like it's so corny like i guess it's like it's the chorus man i th i think the chorus of this song is so dumb it's such a dumb chorus yeah let's just put it in awful okay yeah we're still in march we're towards the end of march here we can't be friends ariana grande we can't be friends ariana i don't get why this was like the big hit out of the album songs. Like, I really don't understand it. The the hits off of this album confuse me. Like, I'm gonna put We Can't Be Friends in OK too, which sucks because I do like this Ariana album. I just think it, if you picked like so, there's so many songs that if they were the hit instead of this one, Like By or Supernatural, Don't Wanna Break Up Again, or The Boy Is Mine even, that I think I would have put, I would put a lot of those songs in good. But like, this is one of the most underwhelming tracks on the entire album for me. It just kind of sounds like a, a slightly more lifeless version of a Robin song. This is one of the more potent tracks emotionally, but it just instrumentally and like the vibe like just feels so um, lackluster. Like I, I just was not that into the song. So I was kind of surprised that this was the hit. I guess um, maybe people were living for the drama of it all and the emotionality of it, but I it, it did confuse me that this was the big song. Okay, this is one that I really have very little personal experience from besides hearing it in passing like i feel like this just kind of silently became a hit um i never listened to this track much so i think some of you guys were a little harsh on this i wouldn't say it's bad i think it just kind of reminds us of an era and bringing back a sound that just isn't even dead yet like what we we don't need to necessarily revive the bluesy but like the kind of like a pop slant, like an alt rock slant on like blues music. I just think it's kind of, I, I wouldn't say take me to church. Like I see where you guys are coming from that. But like this more so reminds me of like a little bit more of a CW Black Keys. It, 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 it has Riverdale written all over it. Riverdale, I'm wearing a leather jacket. I'm putting it on. I'm leaving home. This is a Riverdale montage song. And I'm not saying that necessarily makes it bad. Honestly, like, I think it's like, it's fine. I think he's got a great voice. Teddy Swims has like a really nice, soulful voice that will bring a man in their 40s to tears. Something happened in April in music that, you know, kind of took over the entire month. I feel like the narrative in music in April was very specific and it started with this song. All right, like that. Future Metro Boomin, Kendrick Lamar. Love this song. I don't think this song would be in great without Kendrick's verse. I do really like the song. I listen to the song like nonstop. But without the Kendrick verse, it would be in good. But the Kendrick verse, I think, is just incredible. So I'm putting it in great. Yeah, I mean, just insane. Like, it kicked off like a whole thing. Uh, but the verse and the wordplay in general from Kendrick on here is insane. The chorus is all right, but the, the beat's stellar too. Uh, I think Metro like outdid himself with the speed. Probably easily the best beat on the album, I think. All right, what came after this? Kind of an insane vibe switch. I remember this song. This song was nonstop. The song was huge. This is the most I heard Hosier since Take Me to Church, really. This is easily the biggest hit of Hosier's career since Take Me to Church. You know what I think of when I hear this song, guys? Dudes doing thirst traps to this song in like sweaters. Okay, listen, I like Hosier. I do like Hose here, but um, there's a couple things about this song. I think the instrumental, like the pluckiness of this instrumental, I find to be like really irritating because just not much changes. Uh, I, I find it to just be overall around uh, boring. But here's the thing is that I think like if anybody else sung this, like the lyrics, like I'll take my whiskey neat, like coffee black, like uh, like all of these traditional masculine things, like if anyone else but Hosier sung it, I would hate it. I, but I don't hate this song because I genuinely believe that Hosier takes his whiskey neat, drinks his coffee black like, I think he is that, like, traditional sort of, like, masculine, woodsy man. Like, I believe it. 
<laughs> like I do believe it. But in general, I find the song to be like pretty boring. So uh, yeah, I'll put it up there. Uh, I'm I, I will always blame the song for all of those like thirst traps and sweaters I saw from like straight dudes. I, I hated that shit. What's next? Oh yeah, the other thing that happened um, right after April, end of April. Yeah, May, end of April. It's Taylor Swift season. Fortnite, obviously, obviously a song needed to hit number one, of course. Fortnite, Taylor Swift, Post Malone. It's known that I do not like this album very much, but I think that this song is one of the least defensive tracks. Like, I think that Post Malone does feel like an afterthought. I kind of wish that he had a little bit more of a predominant feature. I don't know. I don't love the idea of putting an artist like a big name artist as a feature like Taylor Swift did previously with uh, Snow on the Beach with Lana Del Rey. And now she did it kind of with Post Malone where he just is kind of an afterthought. I think just like leave them as a hidden feature and don't put them as a listed one if you're going to feature them so in the background. Like it's just so background. Um, I think the song is fine. There's nothing in this song that really made me cringe or made me want to like, uh, makes me rush to turn it off. I, I don't think it's that bad. What happened after Taylor? Oh my God. You know, there's something satisfying about uh, Taylor Swift dropping a lackluster album and then who dethrones her from the number one spot? It's a diss track about Drake by Kendrick Lamar where he calls him up edophile not like us kendrick i think this needs its own category i i think it just it's it's better than those other songs it just is yeah I, i'm making its own tier one of kendrick's best hits ever uh, the west coast vibe of this like the mustard beat is crazy it is clearly it is clearly just thrown together too you know what i mean like this is clearly just a beat that Mustard sent Kendrick and Kendrick just made a whole song out of it and then put it out. Oh my God, it's it's so catchy. It's fucking absolutely brutal. It's one of the most brutal diss tracks I've ever heard, but it slaps so hard that everyone's like, yeah, it's a banger, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna pump this. Th this song is getting played in the clubs. It is just mercilessly making fun of Drake, which I think as far as like a war tactic goes in, in like a rap beef, like there's nothing more genius then putting out a song that gets so big and is like so catchy and is such a banger that they themselves cannot escape it. it this was a number one song. Not Like Us kind of needs to be in its own category for now because there just is not another song like Not Like Us. Like there isn't. There isn't another song like Not Like Us. Narratively, uh, it slaps the hardest on this entire list. Like it, it deserves its own category. Like it kind of just has to have its own. Okay, now, now we're getting to like super recent territory. This, I'm not sure if I entirely remember what it sounds like, but I think I have heard it. I had some help with Post Malone and Morgan Wallen. I've said so many times, what I've said like, clearly Post Malone's passion doesn't lie in hip hop music. Clearly it doesn't lie in pop music. The dude loves Johnny Cash. The dude loves Bob Dylan. The dude loves Fleet Foxes. I was like, Hosty, make a folk album. I'd love to hear you make an album with music in a style that you're passionate about. And then his last album was kind of folk adjacent, but it had 808s on it. He's still making like goofy bars uh, about Shrek. And like he did not fully commit on that album, Austin, which I don't know. It's crazy to call the album like after your first name being like, oh, yo, this is the real me. And it sounds like that. And now he's like, OK, that didn't really work for me. That was like uh, that was the, my biggest failure of an album in a while. Let me try my hand at country music. That's trendy right now. Let's do country. And obviously that worked out well for him because the country fans right now will literally eat anything up any stadium country garbage they'll eat up these days this is bad i guess it's not like horrible but yeah this is a bad song what's the most recent number one song we all know what it is we all can't stop listening it's everywhere it's everywhere i feel stupid i feel stupid about this song because when i heard it when i reacted to it on stream i said like you know i like this song i like the direction i think it's cool i just question if she went this direction Direction too fast went a different direction too fast and like i don't know if this is going to help towards her monumental rocket ship to stardom that she's riding on uh, with espresso and i was fucking wrong because this song is like gonna be bigger than espresso it's please 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 screen of carpenter so 
I'll take my losses. The most recent number one song, Please, Please, Please. This song honestly grew on me. I liked it when I initially heard it. I was a little taken aback by it, I think at first, because I was expecting something a little bit more like Espresso because that song was so popular. But, and I still like Espresso probably a little bit more, but I think that th this is a really strong song from her. I was, I'm impressed that she was able to go this direction and make such a massive song out of it. I think it's insane that this song went number one and Espresso didn't because this does not have massive pop hit written all over it. Espresso obviously did. People are attached to the the clever lyricism. I think that that is the big selling point of Sabrina. Yeah, she can sing, she can perform, but I think it's her cheeky lyrics that I think is the huge selling point of her. Obviously, like that's why the song went so big on TikTok with the whole motherfucker line and like like a memorable sharp lyrics. And yeah, I'm, I'm a supporter of Sabrina at this point. As somebody who didn't love uh, emails I can't send, and I found that album to be overall pretty uninteresting beyond a couple of tracks. I am fully on board uh, the Sabrina Carpenter train just because she's putting out her best stuff. So at the end of the year, I think I'm going to update this and I might move some stuff around. So like none of this is necessarily final, but I'm pretty happy with it right now.